Welcome to a basic introduction to mechanical ventilation. This is chapter 7.2, Ventilating COPD, Basic Settings. Many of the principles we discussed in the section on asthmatics are pretty much the same as when it comes to ventilating for COPD, particularly in the acute phase. Most of the time, a dual mode or volume control mode of ventilation is a good choice, and using a tidal volume of 7 to 9 milliliters per kilogram is probably pretty reasonable. This will ensure a reasonable minute ventilation while watching the pressures that are being generated. Unlike asthmatics, the main purpose of ventilating patients with COPD is to rest them, and generally they're not a huge challenge to manage. They are prone to hyperinflation, and this needs to be monitored and avoided if all possible. The expiratory flow is restricted as well, so you'll need to give the patient time to completely exhale before the next breath. You can tell that this is happening when the airflow graph on the ventilator has returned back to the baseline of zero. If not, then you need to be concerned that air is being trapped in the lungs and hyperinflation is occurring. Because of the airway resistance and hyperinflation, you should also measure the plateau pressure and intrinsic PEEP by performing some form of an end-expiratory and end-inspiratory hold to measure the plateau pressure and the intrinsic PEEP. An increase in either of these is a sign of hyperinflating trouble. Because of higher intrinsic PEEP, patients are at risk of ventilator dyssynchrony from an inability to trigger the ventilator. For example, if the intrinsic PEEP is positive 17 centimeters of water and the ventilator is set to trigger when it senses a pressure of minus 3 below the PEEP, then the patient will need to generate 20 centimeters of water in order to reach that threshold if the PEEP is set to zero. This will cause the patient to attempt many undelivered breaths, causing extra work and anxiety for the awake patient. Since rest is your goal, the PEEP should be set to closely match the intrinsic PEEP so the patient can easily trigger a breath. As well, the ventilator should initially be set to do all of the ventilatory work so the respiratory muscles can get some rest. Now, this does not necessarily mean that heavy sedation or paralysis is necessary as these have been shown to delay extubation and prolong time in the intensive care unit. A properly set ventilator can achieve the dual goal of respiratory muscle rest while allowing the patient to be awake and participate in their care, and once they're ready, to start taking over the work of breathing on their own.